This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 93. In this episode, I will show you more than 40 new features in nine different apps. So make sure all your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. On a side note, I recently added these 12 stunning wallpapers to the channel's Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app. So if you want to support the channel and give your phone a fresh new look, the Play Store download link is in the description, which will give you a lifetime access to all my exclusive wallpapers for just $1.99. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Let's start with Google Photos as it got a massive number of new features. On the left, I have the Pixel 5 running the older version and on the right, I have the 9 Pro XL running the newer version to show you the difference in design. You will notice here that instead of having the library tab, now we have collections and when you go to both, you will see a massive difference in the design. All the options that we used to have at the top are now located at the bottom and anything that used to be a carousel or a grid is now wrapped in its own collection like on this device or albums. Not only this, but Google moved some of the uh, categories that we used to have under search like people, places and documents. Now they are part of the collections tab instead and you will find them over here, people and pets, documents and places. Plus these collections are now organized differently. For example, under places, you can jump right away to the map view or pick a place from the carousel. But now when you tap on it, you will see the map view at the top and all other places are organized in a list view. Moving to the people and pets collection, previously we used to have the faces in a circular design, but when you go inside, they change into squares. But now it makes more sense as the design remains circular inside and outside. The second change is the removal of the search bar from this page, but we got a new option under the ellipsis called hide faces from memories. Here it will take you to a separate page where you can select faces to show less, or you can block certain faces entirely. Talking about hiding faces, now you have a similar option under the memory itself. So for example, when I open this one, tap the ellipses and then tap the ellipses again under the face. Here you can do a quick edit for the label, change the cover photo or hide face from memory as well. The albums collection looks a little bit different too. When you go inside, you will see the same grid design as the previous version, but now you have the option to change it into a list view. The new album button is now located at the top right corner with the sorting options appearing at the bottom of the screen and instead of next to the menu. Moving to the search tab, now you will see some differences too. First, the search bar at the top is much thicker to match the one that we got in the Google app. Plus, when you scroll down, you will see this new jumpy animation when you reach the end of the page, which didn't exist before. And when you search for any custom query, like for example, the word yellow, you will see two filters at the top. One is called best match or the most recent, which didn't exist before. So these are the major differences in design. Now let me show you even more features. When you record a quick video using the tap and hold gesture on the shutter key in the camera app, Google Photos normally show you this section where you can pick a specific shot. But what's new here, when you go inside, now you have the ability to trim the video from here and save a copy, or you can even rotate or mute the video, which will give you some quick shortcuts instead of going to the video editor. Under memories, now you have the ability to generate titles for your suggested memories using AI. And when you tap on this glowing button, it will show you a Gemini-like card at the bottom of the screen with this really nice glowing animation. Here it will give you quick titles that you can edit if you want, or you can generate more ideas. And finally, you can give the AI a hint to generate the title for you. So here I have the Cybertruck and a Zeker car. So these are electric cars. So let me show you what happens when you give it a hint. And as you see, it says here, reviving up in the electric city, my electric car adventure in Dubai and so on. And that's how you can generate titles for your memories. And if you have a Pixel 8 or newer and the audio magic eraser is supported, now it identifies different speakers, but I found this feature to only work on the Pixel 9 Pro XL because I tried to edit the same video on my 8 Pro and as you see it says here speech where I can mute everybody, but now I can mute a certain person 
from the video. And the last change I'm gonna show you in this chapter is in the video editor. You will notice here a new design for the timeline. Now it's surrounded with a border and it has more curved corners as well. Plus it shows the time underneath it. When you tap and hold on the timeline, you'll notice here a small bubble showing the exact timestamp to make your precise selection. Now let's talk about Gcam version 9.5, which is still exclusive to the Pixel 9 models, at least for now, but there are some new features. The first one is under Night Sight. When you tap on this button to adjust the duration, now you have the ability to activate Night Sight from here. And once you do this, it will set your expectations by showing you how long it will take to capture the shot. And it will automatically set a timer for five seconds, just to make sure your phone is perfectly steady after tapping the shutter key. Not only this, but once you hit the shutter key, if your phone is not stable, it will tell you here at the top, make sure your phone is steady and then you will get this new animation. But once your phone moves, it will automatically quit the astro mode and take a single shot uh, as if you are using the normal night sight. Also keep in mind that the five seconds timer is something new to version 9.5. Previously, we used to have only three or 10. The other feature I want to show you is the square overlay that shows around faces when you try to take a shot. And here's how it looks when you show it multiple faces so you can see a square on top of each one. Now let's move on to Google Play Store and there are tons of new features to show you in this app. The first one is the new collections widget. When you tap and hold on the icon, now you have the widgets option, which will show you two versions of this new collections widget. This is the small version and this is the big one. And let me show you how it looks on my home screen. This is the bigger version. And when I make it smaller, it will change into icons only like this. So let's deep dive into this new widget to show you how it works. This widget will simply consolidate all your previous activities and personalized content into one place. So as an example here, it shows some quick picks from YouTube music and suggesting some games to play. And when I tap on any of these options, it will open the relevant app accordingly. On the left, you will see some of the categories here like watch, game, read, listen, and the app library button. When you tap on any of them, it will take you to the relevant tab into the collections page that has its own icon when you go to the recent apps screen. The first thing you will see at the top is the collections carousel. It includes all the options I just mentioned in addition to uh, food, shop, social, and app library. But when you scroll down to the bottom, you will see here it says collections displays personalized app content from apps and developers who have partnered with us, which means you will only see content if the app supported the feature. And then you will see a bubble here with quick shortcuts for the app relevant to this category and also installed on your phone. Let's move on to the next one, which is called the game. Here it shows the games and some recommendations from Google Play Store. Then we have food, listen, which includes YouTube music, audiobooks, and uh, some uh, podcasts as well. Then we have food, shop, social, and finally the app library. So let's take a quick look at the app library, which looks very similar to iOS. All the apps on your phone are automatically organized in this page. The first two boxes include the top used apps, and here you can see all of them with a subfolder that you can expand and the same applies to the recently added box. Then you will see the rest of your apps are categorized automatically in these folders. You have business, communication, creativity, finance, and so on. And this is how the folder expands. And that's pretty much it. It gives you some sort of an app library similar to the app drawer but automatically organized. I couldn't find a way to start collections from within the Play Store itself, and it seems like the only option is from the widget. So far, I don't see any value in this feature in my day-to-day -day usage, but I will wait until more developers start partnering with Google to see if it's any useful. The only thing I wish to see in the future if Google continued with this feature is the ability to switch between collections directly from the widget, which will act as a quick shortcut to take some actions directly from the home screen and instead of opening the app every time I tap on it. And they can also add an extra button to start the collections app as a whole if I want to. Beside the collections, now let's talk about the new features in the app itself. And the first one is under search. You will notice here that the suggested for you section has this new filter-like design for the available options that you can tap on like this. And also Google added this new sponsored section that you can modify by tapping the ellipses, which will take you to the My Ad Center to adjust some stuff and learn more about the advertising. And then you have the recent searches section. 
In some app listings, you will see the events and offers in addition to the frequently asked questions generated by the AI right under the install button instead of showing somewhere at the bottom of the screen. You might also come across this new location access request. It says here, play use your device location to recommend apps, offers, and the other local content that are relevant in your area, which you can continue with or keep it without a location access if you want. Another change is the ability to update your side loaded apps from Google Play Store. And as an example, I downloaded this APK from APK Mirror and installed it from Google Chrome. And now when I go to the updates, I can see Temple Run as one of the options. Under the Games tab, when I scroll down a bit, I see this new section saying, what are you interested in? Giving me a lot of options to choose. And you can multi-select whatever you want and hit the Submit button, which will reflect on your suggestions. And under the Profile menu, we got this new option called Personalization in Play. Tapping on it will take you to a separate page where you can adjust some of your personalization settings, like what kind of activities you want to share with Google Play Store, My Ad Center, download your data, and so on and so forth. I also found that Google Play Store can now download up to three apps at the same time. Just recently, it was updated from one app to two, and now we got one more. And lastly, the loading animation got updated, not only under the downloads, but you will see it everywhere. You will not see this new pattern in the progress circle. It will become bigger, bigger, and then it will reset again after a while in this very slow and nice animation. Next, we have Google Chrome, which also got some cool new features. The first one is the ability to add listen to this page as a shortcut to your toolbar. To achieve this, tap and hold on the current shortcut you have, tap on edit, and you will find listen to this page as a new option, which I'm personally a big fan of. The second change is the haptic feedback you get when you try to refresh any web page, which feels really nice in hand. Change number three is the ability to give a color to your tab group. So here is a tab group I have, and when I tap on this small circle, now I can change its color, which will make it easier to identify your groups. It's also worth mentioning that the tab switcher got some new bulk actions. So for example, when I select multiple tabs, now I have the ability to group all of them at once, bookmark all tabs or share all of them in an ordered list. And here's how the copied links look like. Another cool new feature is the ability to search your history by app, date, and more. So let me show you a quick example. Here's my browsing history. And let's say I want the results for the 1st of September only. All I need to do is to type the date at the top and it will show me the results accordingly. Then you have the ability to filter by app. In this case, I only have Google app, which I can choose from here. Or you can search by anything else that comes to your mind, like the website name, the article name, and so on and so forth. The last change I'm going to show you in this chapter is the updated continue with these tabs section. Now it shows two websites and a sort of only one like before with the ability to expand the list, which will take you to your browsing history. On top of this, Google added a new option under settings that you can use to turn off this feature. It says here, continue with this tab, which you can turn off and it will remove it from your homepage. The next app we have is Google Messages and it got three new additions. The first one is in the camera interface. Now we have a new button on the left, which will give you some filters, accessories, and characters to choose from. The first option is the beauty mode. Then you can add some accessories like glasses, a hat, a panda, and this is another hat in a black and white style. Then you can play around with these characters that look very similar to the Animoji feature in iMessage. And I found this one to be the best. It can detect my eyes, my mouth, and my tongue. So it works really well. And here's the last character you get. And by the way, this feature works in photos and videos. Change number two is the bigger Gemini button that you can also turn off under settings if you want. When you go to settings, you will see Gemini in messages. Once you turn off the switch, the button will be removed. And lastly, the send button now has a fill color that you can see on the right side. The next one we have is the Google app and it got six new changes. The first change is under Google Lens. Now you have the ability to immediately add to your search by using the mic when you tap and hold on the search button. So let me show you a quick example. Show me in porcelain color. And here you go. 
These are the search results after adding my text to the search. Now let's move to the app itself to show you even more. The first change is the redesigned shortcuts under the search bar. Now they don't use text but only icons. And when you start scrolling, the search bar will stack to the top. And then we have a new animation for the hum to search feature. And this is how it looks. Also, the search results design got updated. Now you will get this new design with a try again button at the bottom of the page. And this is how it looks when you expand the results. Under the profile menu, you will see a new option called search personalization. When you go inside, it will give you tons of things to adjust over here. The first thing you can do is to turn off the personalize search. And then you have a list of things to do here, like checking the uh, search history. And you can choose to activate it or not. Then you have the liked and saved which will show you all your collections. And then we have the following. Then we have not interested. You can also choose your streaming preferences from here, which will show you the most popular streaming services. So you can add any of them to your personalized search. And then you have the my ad center and my Google activity. The notification settings also got updated. So when you go to notifications, you will see a brand new design with bigger toggles, in addition to a lot more options that I've never seen before that you can turn on or off from here. Last but not least, the saved tab got a design refresh. So when you go there, you will see the saved items are now showing in a carousel with the collections showing underneath it. And you'll see here this more rounded design for the boxes. And this is how it looks under the liked tap and finally the followed and the last chapter i have in this video is to show you a couple of new random additions the first one is this gorgeous new clock widget called the stacked you can find under the clock widgets and you have two different designs you have transparent and solid and here is how it looks and finally i got the find my device network which is available for the pixel 8 and 9 models now when i go to settings and then security and the privacy then device finders find my device the first option here is called find your offline devices and here you can choose between multiple options you can turn it off entirely you can use the feature without network which will not participate in the network so you will not be able to locate your devices if they are turned off it will only show you the last saved location then you can use with network in high traffic areas only or you can use the feature in all areas so it depends on your personal preference and if you have the feature activated every time you turn off your device you will see this message at the bottom to let you know that you can locate it when it's offline so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new features i wanted to show you in this video please let me know in the comments or reach me out on social media if you spotted any new feature in google apps to include in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video